Welcome back guys for part three. Ding ding. Let's get started. We're going to talk a little bit about passive diffusion and we'll talk about ionization. Just jumping right into it. Over here we have a little picture. It's nice and been illustrated. I'm just going to draw this very non-straight line right down here to help you guys see a little bit better. Over on this side, this is what we would call the blood. And over here is the tissue that we're trying to get to. With passive diffusion, you can see that the molecules over here on the blood side are trying to get over to the tissue side. But once they do, what they're trying to do is get an equilibrium. We want the same amount of concentration in the tissue as over here in the blood. Once they're equal, the drugs will stop moving back and forth. You can think of it like that or you can think that they're moving at the exact same rate so we'll have the exact same concentration. At no time is this tissue going to be greater than the blood. Now, to go from the blood to the tissue, it does require certain elements of the drug, certain characteristics that are needed. Our drugs need to be highly lipophilic. You guys are going to see again when we went back and talked about bioavailability and those good drug characteristics, that's exactly what's needed for passive diffusion. We need them to be unionized. If you look over here, these big molecules over here, these are ionized. They're too big to get across this membrane. It's just way too large. It just can't slip on by. These drugs will never make it over onto this side using passive diffusion. They also have to be small. Being too big, you just, you can't fit a really big dude through a really, really tiny small hole. And that's what kind of passive diffusion is. And it also requires a concentration gradient. That's what I was saying about how the drugs from the blood side are trying to get over to the tissue side because this is a higher concentration than this side. But once they're equal, the drugs will continue to move at an equal rate, keeping the same amount of concentration on both blood and tissue. And never should this tissue side's concentration be larger than the blood side. The blood side, because that would go against the concentration gradient. All right. One of the things that we can do to help figure out a little bit about more about passive diffusion is look at the ionization. Now, we're going to talk about a couple of different things. Now, remember Henderson ha Hasselbach's equation here. Two different equations for acids and bases. Acids as, acids as kind of the evil guys. When something's evil, it puts I over you. So it puts itself before it puts others. That's one way you can remember ionization over you. And that's just no good. Bases, however, bases are the sweet guys, the really adorable people who always put you before themselves. Isn't that sweet? Everybody needs to have a couple good bases in their life. Now, using this equation, we'll be able to determine if a drug is going to become ionized or unionized in certain situations. Let's start with acids first. All right, to figure out if something's going to be ionized or unionized in a situation, we have to kind of look at the Hasselbach or the Henderson Hasselbach equation. One way to remember it is to know that when an acid gets involved with another acid, it's going to stay in its unionized form, which is good. That allows things to go back and forth. Now, if an acid hops into a base form, then it's going to become ionized. And we'll talk about how the unionized and ionized is really good or bad here in a minute. And then the exact opposite is true for bases. We'll go down here to the bottom. If a base goes into a more of a basic environment, it'll stay unionized. And if a base goes into a more acidic environment compared to where it is, it'll become ionized. Now, if that just seems a little complicated to remember, there are, there are a couple quick tricks. Now, let's say with acids. If we're going to have a lower pH, we're going to favor the unionized form. And by lower pH, we just mean a lower pH than what the drug itself is. So, a lower pH, remember, is acidic, so it'll favor its unionized form. If we go into an environment that has a higher pH than what the drug is, it is going to become more ionized because in relationship that environment is going to be more basic. And the same is true with bases. 
if you go into an environment that has a lower pH, it's going to favor its ionized form. And if you go to a pH that has a higher, the pH that is higher will favor the unionized form. Alright, so now we just want to drive home a quick little point. Let's say I have my little barrier again. And this side is blood. And this side is our tissue. And on the tissue side, we have a more basic environment. So take, say I take an acidic drug, okay? And these are just in relationship to one another. And this acidic drug crosses over because over here, this is like all more acidic and it's unionized and then the acidic drug crosses over here using passive diffusion because it wants to balance out that equilibrium. Once it's over here, an acidic drug traveling to a more basic environment is going to become ionized. Once this drug is ionized, we know that it can no longer cross over this concentration gradient, so then it gets stuck on this basic side. That's what we call ion trapping. You guys will learn a lot more about this. Um, I think it's like your P4 here. So tell when we're talking about moms and pregnancies and all that fun stuff. But just remember, there are times when a drug can get trapped on the other side because it goes from a more acidic environment over to a basic environment and it changes ionization form. And we know ion when something is ionized, it cannot cross that barrier freely. All right, guys, that's everything. I hope you guys learned a lot and we'll continue on our journey. Thanks. See ya.